Recorded live. Hello, everyone. This is Terry Ling here with the University of Acadia on Talk to you tonight with Frank McCollins from Australia. And we've got some great topics. Frank has some great topics to cover tonight and uh, some finished uh, products and um, some of the things that we've been waiting on and some uh, more good information to lead into from there. So uh, as a reminder to everyone, uh, those of you that are on the phone, um, when we get to the question and answer session, star 8 will put you in the question queue. And those of you on the chat, if you'll type question in all uppercase, and then in the upper and lowercase, proper case, type in your question after that, we'll catch your question over on the chat. Um, this is also a reminder, we're not here to give legal advice, and um, everything that's being, being brought forward is for educational purposes only, and uh, use it as you will, and we'll help answer and answer any questions that we can possibly answer and help as many folks as we can. So with that, Frank, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, thanks, Terry. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming on to the call tonight. University of Acadia uh, regular call. Uh, with this call will be available to listen to on University of Acadia at university.ucadia.info as well as TalkShoe. There's a lot to talk to you about and let's share with you tonight. Finally, the cognitive law has been finished and is available to view up on one, that's O-N-E hyphen heaven.org. And I look forward to going through uh, that with you tonight and showing you the uh, finished product. Also, the new version of the Canons of Positive Law with three quarters of those articles now being renumbered is also available. And I, in particular, look forward to sharing some of that with you. In fact, I'm going to start with some of the sections on positive law first, specifically tax and then bonds and then the concept of bidding and auctions. Things that I know have been uncertain for a lot of folk when they're going to court and trying to understand some of these rituals that they still see, judges in robes, banging a gavel on a, on a block. What's going on there? What is a bond? Where's it come from? What's it mean? I want to cover some of those things because these, this shows you that with everything we're doing, as we learn, as we find, as we reveal, it's about presenting that information to you in a foundation that will hopefully stand, stand the test of time. So I look forward to going through that with you. And I do feel that after we go through the key updates to cognitive law, which you can now see, and the updates to positive law, which is still just being finalized in numbering at the moment, I have no doubt that you'll see again that our remedy, our questions, our learning, our insight, our help, is going to be available through the completion of the canons, the completion of the canon law, that the law itself will give us the help. The law itself will give us the guidance and the law will, will help us find a way through the present problems that we have. And that's my hope and that's why I promise to you tonight. Before we start, I just want to summarize last week's call and some of the key things from last week. As we go through these calls, and uh, when I speak to you, I always seek to speak to you from the heart and the head. I seek to speak to you with truth. And sometimes when I've shared with you insights in the past, particularly as we've been learning and the reactions we've received from people sending their ecclesiastical deeds and the kind of dishonorable non-responses or crazy letters that they receive back, I know that that's frustrated many of you. I also know that because the system seems unrelenting, universally unrelenting, that it is easy to lose hope. It is easy to feel that whatever we do, despite what we do, there's no real change. There's no real insight. There's no real success, lasting change to the way the system, the present Roman system, the system based on the Roman cult uh, is changing, is doing. So last week I covered with you 
what I felt was important to share, that what we did in June the 12th on the Day of Illumination, on the Feast of Pentecost, in sending the package to Pope Benedict and to the Jesuit General and to the head of the Franciscans, is not the only thing that we are doing this year. I did share with you uh, at least two other dates leading towards December the 21st, uh, which we've listed as Judgment Day. I listed two other important dates that are coming up, and that was August the 15th, being the Feast of the Assumption, the original date of the creation of the Jesuit Order, the people, the Brains Trust, the people that created the present system of Sesta KVs, of slavery, of control, of the matrix of the mind that we'll be talking a bit more about tonight. So that date I mentioned is a crucial date. That is the date that we will be launching to the Bank for International Settlement, uh, also to the Vatican, also to the Jesuits, also to a number of key parties, the supreme financial system. This is the financial system that is coming to life because of what is coming through the covenant of One Heaven and through Eucadia. Now I know that this has been an, an area of intense interest for many and I also know that the lack of movement in the area of the currency is for some people been a reason why they might have gone a bit cold on Eucadia and One Heaven because a lack of money a lack of energy, a lack of our ability to trade and seek an alternate means of surviving outside of the present system without being forced into some kind of commune is for many of us one of the reasons that we find it difficult day after day to make ends meet. Many of us, many of us are in a situation of dire financial stress which in, in reality is the fact that our energy is being drained and our ability to share energy with others is compromised because of the overriding present system. So August 15th is very, very important, as is October the 31st, or Hallow's Eve. I, I made a mistake and some of you raised it to me and I appreciate that, that I did mention the word All Saints Day. Of course, All Saints Day is the following day, 1st of November, but All Hallows Eve, October the 31st, the night that all the spirits are supposedly in the Roman system, granted permission to roam the earth for one night. That, of course, is the anniversary of the thesis and the challenge of Martin Luther, something that formed the match, the spark that formed the whole Protestant movement. And on October the 31st, we will be for the first time in almost 500 years, 500 years, we will be proclaiming that the Vatican's claim of canon, rule, norm, standard of law has ended, finally has ended. So I share these with you because these are moments of history and that whilst at the moment it may appear that we are a small group, and we are, and that these have little effect to the system that seems unyielding, that seems impossible to recognize that if they don't change, they will uh, experience the fate of being dragged into the streets and strung up on lampposts. It seems at the moment that what we're doing may really amount for naught compared to this huge system that keeps crushing us and taking our energy. But history is a funny thing. You can lie and fake history as the Jesuits have done and in fact a papal bull that gave them permission to change history. But if you do the history, if you do the act, that in retrospect when their temples fall, when their rule is over, when they have been taken from their palaces and held to account. And that day, I assure you, will come. When it comes, 
It is because of these important elements of history that validate that it is not simply an act of rebellion or revolution or strength or non-consent, but it is not, it is, it is, sorry, it is lawful. It is just. It is righteous. It is divinely validated because of these actions that we've taken place. And that's the key. There's been many revolutions. There's been many acts of defiance. But it is about ending their reign lawfully, not being tyrants ourselves, understanding that if we are to restore the law, we must respect the essence of the law. And so this is a foreclosure. So before we talk about some key things tonight, I just hope that from last week and that quick summary now, that even if you are facing court, even if you're facing prison, even if they're coming to take your home, to take your possessions, that you don't give up hope. Please don't give up hope. Because we are witnessing the change and the darkest point is often before the dawn. The moment of doubt, the greatest moment of doubt is usually the few minutes before midnight when the change is coming. And so if we remain resolved, if we may remain committed, if we can continue to share this information with others, then we will see that what is occurring all around the world at the moment will have a spine, will have a reason, will have a strength and will have a lasting effect in what we're doing with the law, with Eucadia and with One Heaven. Okay, let's get on to some important information uh, to share with you to show you that what as we go through as we develop the canons we continue to uncover and and clarify important information so i want to talk about cognitive law but before i do that i'm going to ask all of you if you can those that are on the call now and those that will be listening later to call up a browser uh, one hyphen heaven.org please type that in uh, it's one-heaven.org and when you get to the home page I'm going to ask you to click on positive law which is the fifth link down on the page so please let me know when you get there and when you get to the page uh, which is listing the index of canons of positive law I'm going to ask you to go down to article 107 on taxes and the reason I'm going to ask you to go and have a look at this is just to show you some of the very, very important insights that continue to come to hopefully give us a better understanding of why things are or are not working. So Article 107, Taxes. Now, if you've been to this page before, you might want to refresh the page because the older version might be in your browser. So just have a look and, and refresh that page. When you do refresh that page, you'll see there are a whole lot of different canons about tax. And what I want to do is, is just share a couple of these with you. And I'm going to read them out to you, but I want to share some important insights and what this means. So here under canon 2119, and please bear with me. I know it's a lot of words, but I'm going to go through these. So canon 2119 says... Under the modern, inferior Roman legal system, almost all revenue of an estate is now classed as taxes, which is both confusing and deliberately misleading. However, from all the variety of taxes, there just, exists just three base forms, being rent tax, compensation tax, and duty tax. So Canon 2120. Rent tax is the deliberate fraud of misnaming rent charged to a tenant by the landlord being the executives of the deceased estate of the province or nation for use of some property. Now, both income tax and company tax are forms of rent tax. So it's important to understand what, what the origin of the tax is before we get into how they force us 